Okay, so we're up to here, up to 4.3, continuing on to 4.3. Quiz tomorrow, quiz tomorrow will be finding maximum and minimum on a closed interval. So that'll be the closed interval method back from section 4.1. And so this is specifically what I'll give you on the quiz tomorrow. So page 281, find the absolute max and min on a closed interval. And of course, you can use all this stuff. So let's see the kinds of questions that were like that, similar to page 284, stuff like 47 through 61. Okay, so they give you a closed interval, right? So find the absolute max, absolute min on a closed interval. So we mentioned you have to check out the endpoints for sure. You're definitely going to plug in endpoints. And you're also going to check the critical numbers. Okay, so let's look at that uh, algorithm, I suppose. Okay, so you're going from A to B. Find the critical numbers. What's the critical number? Set the derivative equal to zero and set the derivative equal to undefined. Find undefined values, but still within the domain. Okay, and then just find the function values at the critical numbers and also all the endpoints. So then you got a list, right? Out of that list, whichever is the highest y value, that's the absolute maximum. Whatever is the lowest will be the absolute minimum. Okay. All right, and same thing as usual, I'll break you up into your breakout groups and it isn't due until um, class begins on Monday at 12.10 p.m. Okay. All right, so we were starting curve sketching. I was gonna do a bunch more. Um, for today, and we'll see how far we get. Okay, so more curve sketches. Now I'm gonna be going out of order. So the reason why I'm going out of order is I'm doing it sort of in uh, easiest to hardest, at least what I think is the easiest to hardest. So the numbering might be a little bit off. So be aware of that. Okay, so I was gonna start off with 37. F of x equals x cubed minus 12x plus two. Okay, so that's way at the end. I'm going to take a quick look at my text here. Yeah. So do the whole analysis, right? So where's the function increasing, decreasing, max, min, concave up, concave down, inflection points? All right. So this is a polynomial. Polynomials tend not to be that bad. Okay. So take the first derivative, take the second derivative. So f prime is 3x squared minus 12 which factors into three times x squared minus four, three times x plus two, x minus two. Okay, and then double prime, f double prime is six x. Okay, set f prime equal to zero. That's easy, you can see right here, plus or minus two. x is plus or minus two. I'm gonna to have to plot these points. To plot the points, I need the y coordinate. Okay, so I plug in two. So two cubed minus 12 times two, so that's eight minus 24 plus two, comes out to be negative 14, it's an equal sign there. Plug in negative two, negative two cubed is negative eight, negative 12 times negative two is 24 plus two, comes out to be 18. Okay, so I have two comma negative 14, negative two comma 18, I have a horizontal tangent, okay, slope is zero. Slope is zero, slope is zero. Okay. Of course, at this stage of the game, you don't know the rest of the graph. All you know is that you have a horizontal tangent here, horizontal tangent here. So is it a maximum, is it a minimum, or neither? So that's when we do the sign chart. Okay, so y prime came out to be this, three times x plus two, x minus two. Okay, sign chart, what do I put on my number line? Negative two and positive two. Because for the derivative, if I plug in negative two, I get zero, right? If I plug in positive two, I get zero. And those are the only places. Therefore, everywhere else, I do not get zero. So if you don't get zero, you either get a positive or a negative. And yes, very, very technically, I'm supposed to set this to be undefined, but you can tell this is always defined, right? Very well defined. <clears throat> you say, when would it be undefined? Well, if you divide by zero, but there's no fraction, if you have a square root of a negative, but there's no square roots, 
Uh, you can't take the natural log of a negative, but there's no natural log. Some trig functions have problems, but there's no trig, there's no log. This is well defined. Okay, so I plug in something here, here, and here. So negative three, something in the middle is zero, something over here is three. Okay. Now, three is always positive, so that plus, plus, plus represents the three. So now I plug in here. So negative three plus two, negative. Negative three minus two, negative. So when I multiply them all together, I have a positive times a negative times a negative, positive. Do the same thing for zero and three. Uh, three is positive, zero plus two, positive. Zero minus two is negative. Multiply them all together, negative. And plug in three, three is positive. Three plus two, positive. Three minus two, positive. Positive times positive times positive, positive. Okay. All right, we are doing the first derivative. First derivative positive, slope positive. Graph is increasing. Slope negative, decreasing. Slope positive, increasing. All right, so that clinches that at negative two, I have a what? Well, if I'm coming from the left, I go up. You continue on the right, you go down, so you must reach a maximum, right? If you go up and then you go down, you reach the maximum. So a relative maximum at negative two, 18. How about two comma negative 14? Well, you went down to two and then you went up. So if the roller coaster goes down and then you go up, you reach the minimum. So here we are, relative maximum, negative 218, relative minimum, two, negative 14. Then I do the same thing for y double prime. <clears throat> yes, I could write intervals of increase and decrease. I'll let you do that. It's not that hard. I'll just say it. F is increasing from negative infinity to negative two, union two to infinity. F is decreasing from negative two to two. Okay, set y double prime equal to zero. So double prime was six x, that's very easy. Set that equal to zero means x equals zero. What is the y coordinate? That's also easy when I plug in zero. Zero minus zero plus two, zero comma two. Sign chart, plug in zero. <clears throat> For this particular case, I don't need as extensive analysis as I do over here because I can't do that in my head. This is very easy to do in your head. If you plug in a negative number, it's negative, right? Negative one. If you plug in a positive number, one, two, it's positive. Negative, positive. Negative second derivative, concave down. Positive second derivative, concave up. That means I have an inflection point. Okay, so I will put the intervals of concavity here. So F is CD concave down from negative infinity to zero, concave up from zero to infinity. The concavity did change, so I do indeed have an inflection point at zero comma two. So that makes me ready for the whole graph. So here we go. Negative two, 18 maximum. Notice I'm not bothering to, to mark down, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That takes too long to get up to 18. So just relatively speaking. Okay, I already know that's a maximum. And two comma negative 14 is a relative minimum or local minimum. Zero two is an inflection point. So increasing, decreasing, increasing, but first, concave down until I reach zero. So upside down U-shape until the inflection point, the rest of the time U-shape. Okay, so increasing, decreasing, increasing, concave down, concave up. So please notice concave up and concave down are definitely different concepts, different ideas than maximum and minimum. <clears throat> okay, here you're increasing, here you're decreasing, but it's still into the concave down situation. 
Here it's concave up, concave up, but it, that doesn't affect increasing or decreasing. Here you're decreasing, <coughs> but it's concave up. Increasing, concave up. And you reach the minimum over here. Okay. So that's that. All right, then I'm going to go all the way back to 13. F of x is sine x plus cosine x between 0 and 2 pi. Okay. So that's one period, so to speak. Only from 0 to 2 pi. So it's on a closed interval now. So it's almost like uh, what I mentioned before on the quiz, maximum interval on a closed interval. So since I have to plug in the endpoints anyway, let me plug in zero, zero comma one, two pi comma one. Plug in zero, sine of zero is zero. Cosine of zero is one. So zero plus one is one. And we already know the period is two pi. So two pi, you also get one. Okay, take two derivatives. F prime of X, cosine X minus sine X. Derivative of sine is cosine, derivative of cosine is negative sine. F double prime, derivative of cosine is negative sine, derivative of negative sine X is negative cosine X. Okay. Set F prime of X equal to zero. Cosine X minus sine X equals zero. Move this over. Cosine and sine are equal, cosine x equals sine x, or you can divide both sides by cosine and you get tangent of x equals one. Okay, that's at 45 degrees and 225 degrees, or in radians, pi over four, five pi over four. Okay, so my critical numbers are at pi over four, five pi over four. Then I plug into the original function, pi over four. Sine of pi over four, you might recall, is radical two over two. Cosine of pi over four is also radical two over two. So f of pi over four is radical two over two plus radical two over two, which is two radical two divided by two. Two cancel out, so you have radical two. It's about 1.4. Okay. Five pi over four, f of five pi over four, Sine and cosine are both negative radical two over two. So you have negative radical two over two minus another radical two over two, which is negative radical two. Right? This is negative two radical two over two. The twos cancel out. So you have that. So my ordered pairs are pi over four radical two and five pi over four negative radical two. Okay. And let's see. Okay, so sine chart, y prime is cosine x minus sine x. Here's zero, here's two pi, pi over four, five pi over four. So I plug in zero, something in between is pi and two pi. Plug in zero, cosine of zero minus sine of zero, one minus zero, one. And two pi, you know, is already the same thing, so that's also one. So positive, positive. Okay, plug in pi, cosine of pi minus sine of pi, negative one minus zero, negative one. All right, so first derivative positive, negative positive. So f is increasing between zero and pi over four, union five pi over four to two pi. F is decreasing from pi over four to five pi over four. What does it mean about this point? It's a maximum because it goes up and it goes down. So maximum at pi over four comma radical two. How about at five pi over four? Well, you went down and then you went up. That makes this a minimum. So you have a minimum here. Okay, and it looks like I didn't write the other part, so I'll continue with that now. Okay, so set the second derivative equal to zero. 
So where was my double prime? Negative sine x minus cosine x. Okay, so let me write that out. Set f double prime of x equal to zero. Negative sine x minus cosine x equal to zero. Okay, well, if I move one over, you get negative sine x equals cosine x. Divide by cosine x, you get tangent of x equals negative one. Okay, so that means the x and the y are opposite in sign. Okay, so that's in quadrants two and four. That's here and here. You might recall both of these are radical two over two. Radical two over two. Same thing over here. Radical two over two. Radical two over two. Second quadrant, let's see, x is negative, y is positive. Fourth quadrant, x is positive, y is negative. So when you take the ratio, when you divide them, you get negative one. Okay, so x is equal to three pi over four and seven pi over four. Okay, if you plug in, f of three pi over four, sine of three pi over four is radical two over two. Cosine of three pi over four is negative radical two over two. So you get zero. Three pi over four comma zero. And likewise for seven pi over four, f of seven pi over four, so at seven pi over four, the sine is negative radical two over two. Oh yeah, you can just refer to this picture right here. This picture gives you. And cosine of seven pi over four is positive radical two over two. So once again, you get zero. We have seven pi over four comma zero. Okay, so f double prime, let me go ahead and write that again. So negative sine x minus cosine x. Zero, two pi. And we're laying down three pi over four and seven pi over four. Okay, so pick something here. Here and here. So how about zero pi two pi? So plug in zero, negative sine zero minus cosine zero. Sine of zero is zero, cosine of zero is one. So negative one means it's a negative. Plug in pi negative sine pi minus cosine pi. Cosine of pi is negative one, so negative negative one is a positive one, positive. And yeah, we already know that two pi is gonna match zero automatically, so that's gonna be negative one also, right? So negative sine two pi minus cosine two pi, so negative. And this is the second derivative so second derivative negative concave down, concave down. Second derivative positive, concave up. So intervals of concavity function is CD concave down from zero to three pi over four, union seven pi over four, two pi. F is concave up between three pi over four and seven pi over four. Okay. Did the concavity change here? Yes. Did the concavity change here? Yes. So that means these two are indeed inflection points. Okay. So I have an inflection point at three pi over four zero and seven pi over four zero. Okay, and we're done.
<laughs> so now to graph it. Uh, by the way, square root of two is about 1.4. And this is about negative 1.4. Okay, so a very rough sketch. One, two, one, two. Okay, I'll just put key points, I suppose. Okay, so starting and ending points, right? Starting and ending points were zero, one, and key prime. Okay. Prime over two, pi, p prime over two, two pi. The heights are one. Let's get the max and min. We had a maximum at pi over four radical two. Pi over four radical two. So that a minimum at five pi over four negative radical two. Five pi over four negative radical two. Somewhere there. And inflection points. Three pi over four, seven pi over four. Zero, zero like that. Okay. So it starts off concave down. Here we go. Upside down U shape. Then concave up U shape. And back to concave down, upside down U shape. Okay. Here we are. Max, min, inflection point, inflection point. So there's our graph. Okay. All right, so that's 13. The next one I wanted to show you is still harder because there's domain issues. That'd be 43. Definitely harder. F of X is X times the square root of six minus X. Yeah. Okay, so I write that as X times six minus X to the one half power. So I got to do a chain rule and a product rule also. That makes it a little bit harder. And yeah, let's consider the domain. I've got a square root. I can like take the square root of stuff greater than or equal to zero. So six minus X greater than or equal to zero. If I add X to both sides, six is greater than or equal to X or turn it around, X is less than or equal to six. So the domain is negative infinity to six, All right? So in the graph, I'll show you the graph right now. We're not supposed to know it yet, but there's nothing bigger than six. So you can't have 6.1 or seven or whatever. I've got graph going that way. All right, it's good to check the intercepts because I need that as part of it. Okay. So how do I get zero? Zero gives me zero and six gives me zero. All right, so zero, zero, six, zero. Okay. Later on, we're gonna have to check for symmetry and asymptotes. So I started with that now, but uh, there's obviously no symmetry. If you replace x by negative x, you don't get the same thing. So six times six. So there's no symmetry. Okay. There are no asymptotes either. Let's see. When x approaches negative infinity, so I plug in negative 100, negative 1,000, negative a million, negative a billion, this thing approaches negative infinity because this will be a large negative. This will be a large positive. Okay. Plug in negative a million. Big negative, big positive. Multiply them together, big negative. So when X approaches negative infinity, Y approaches negative infinity, just like that. You'd say, what about when X approaches positive infinity? Not possible, right? You can't go past six. So I don't have to worry about that. So there aren't any asymptotes. Okay, now, the part that's really not fun is to take your two derivatives. So x times six minus x to the half, product root. Okay, so first times the derivative of the second, 
x times one half, six minus x to the negative a half. Then by the chain, you would times the derivative of the inside, which is negative one, negative one. Plus second function, radical six minus x, times the derivative of the first, so the derivative of x is just one. <clears throat> okay, I definitely need to clean this up before I take the second derivative. Okay, so how do I clean up this mess? Let's see, negative one times x is negative x. Put the two in the bottom. Six minus x to the negative a half means square root in the bottom. Plus radical six minus x. Okay, now, I gotta combine all these before I take a second derivative. So I got a common denominator. So I multiply by two radical six minus x over two radical six minus x. I get a common denominator. Two radical six minus x. Okay. But take a look at this, which is nice. What's radical six minus x times another radical six minus x? Six minus x. So I have negative x plus two times six minus x, all over two radical six minus x. So if you clean this up, I have two times six is 12. Negative x minus two x is minus three x. So finally, I have f prime of x. <clears throat> and then I have to take f double prime of x, which means I have to differentiate this, which is really bad, as you can see. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Bottom times derivative of top. Derivative of 12 minus three x, negative three. Minus, I know I changed the plus, but there's a double negative. Minus top, 12 minus 3x, times the derivative of the bottom. Okay, this is 2 times 6 minus x to the 1 half power. 2 times 6 minus x to the 1 half power. 1 half times 2 is 1. So that's why there's no coefficient there. 6 minus x to the negative a half <clears throat> times the derivative of the inside which is negative one, okay? And now I made that negative and that negative pluses in red because I have a double negative. All over the square of the denominator, that's actually nice. Two squared is four, radical six minus six squared is six minus x. Now, how can I possibly make that look nicer? Okay, so two times negative three is negative six, radical six minus x, Okay, this is plus and this is plus, right? So it's 12 minus 3x over radical 6 minus x, all within the numerator. Okay. Now, I can make this look a lot better if I multiply top and bottom by radical 6 minus x. Okay. You see a lot of nice things happen. It's first on the bottom, four times, this is 6 minus x to the one, six minus six to the half. Put them together, six minus x to the three halves power. And there's still a four. Now, look at the numerator. If I distribute, what happens when I take this times this? I get a radical six minus x times another radical six minus x. Six minus x, that's nice. And when you multiply these, the radicals just cancel out, 12 minus 3x. And then I clean it up, something not so bad. Okay, I have, let's see, 6x, right? Negative 6 times negative x is 6x minus 3x is 3x. <clears throat> negative 36 plus 12 is a negative 24. Okay, so I finally have a very nice expression for the second derivative, and this is as good as it gets for the first derivative. Okay. Now, finally, set f prime equal to zero. So here's my f prime, 12 minus 3x over two radical six minus x equals zero. <clears throat> when is a fraction equal to zero? And the top is zero. So 12 minus 3x equals zero, x equals four. Plug in four, 
4 radical 2. 4 comma 4 radical 2. Okay, then I do my sign chart. 4. I also have to put a 6 here to guard that I can't go past 6, right? My domain is negative infinity to 6. So this prevents me from plugging in, you know, 7 or 8 or whatever. You should put the 6 there. Although you are allowed to, well, I guess I take it back. You can't plug in 6. You can plug in 5. Oh, here we go. I put something here, 0 and 5. Okay, so I plug in 0. Uh, this is positive. That's positive. It's positive. Plug in 5. The bottom is positive. But plug in 5, I have 12 minus 15, which is negative. That's negative. Okay, so plus, minus, increasing, decreasing. All right, so there we go. Increasing, decreasing. That means I have a relative max at 4, comma, 4 radical 2. In fact, it turns out to be an absolute max. Okay, and how do I know it's an absolute max? Well, all the graph does is goes up and down. So if it goes up and down, and that's all it does, this is not only a relative max, it's an absolute max. Okay, and side note, 6, 0 is a relative min. That's a relative minimum there, and it looks like there's nothing else. Okay, set f double prime equal to zero. Here we are. 3x minus 24 divided by blah, blah, blah equals zero. When is a fraction equal to zero? <clears throat> when a numerator is zero, x equals eight. But I cross it out. Why do I cross off x equals eight? It's not in my domain. My domain is negative infinity to six. So what does that mean? My entire number line, at least where it's defined, is of the same sign. It never changes sign, S-I-G-N. Okay, so I get to plug in anything I want. The easiest number to plug in is zero. Okay, so plug in zero and zero. Okay, the bottom is positive. The top is negative by so plugging zero, right? Negative 24 divided by four times six to the three halves. I don't even know what it is, it's positive. Okay, so this graph is always concave down wherever it's defined, which is from negative infinity to six. So F is CD from negative infinity to six, it's concave up nowhere, and therefore there's no infection point. So I'm ready for the graph. So here it is, zero, zero, six, zero, four comma four radical two. You can punch that in your calculator, you know, whatever. Okay. It goes up, it goes down, and it's always concave down. It's always upside down U-shaped. So that's my entire graph. Okay. All right, so, that, so that's how you analyze these graphs. You can see it's kind of lengthy, somewhat tedious. I have to keep that in mind when I construct your test, of course, that you know, sometimes these get really, really long. But you can be sure on the next exam there's going to be something involved in curve sketching but I also realize you only have an hour, or actually not even an hour, but 15 minutes roughly to do it. So whatever I give you has to be quote unquote fair um, to you students. Okay. So that is that. Now we had some problems where you have to make up your own graph. Okay. Right, stuff like this. So sketch the graph of a function that satisfies all of these conditions, blah, blah, blah. Okay. 24 is actually good. Also, so let's do 25. Okay, f prime greater than zero, f double prime less than zero for all x. Okay, so let's think about this. f prime greater than zero means increasing. Double prime less than zero means concave down. Okay, so increasing concave down. 25a, f is increasing concave down, increasing concave down. So there's the picture. All right, that's all. B, 
f prime less than zero, f double prime greater than zero. So let's see, f prime less than zero means decreasing. Double prime greater than zero means concave up. You can put those laws on your cheat sheet if you want. So let's see, decreasing concave up. It's going down, but in a concave up fashion. There we go. That's it. Okay, and I know 24 wasn't asked for, but it's good to practice those also. So let me do 24 also. You should know how to do those also. <clears throat> 24. F prime less than zero, double prime less than zero. Okay, let's see. Decreasing, concave down, All right? So F prime less than zero means the function decreasing, double prime less than zero, concave down. So F is decreasing, concave down. So how do I make it decreasing and upside down U shape? So something like that, is that right? And finally, 24B, F prime positive, double prime positive. F prime greater than zero, increasing concave up. Increasing concave up. So it's going up and it's an upside, uh, sorry, it's, an up, it's a U shape. Like that. So here's all four of these at the same time. <clears throat> okay, increasing, concave down. Decreasing, concave up. Decreasing, concave down. Increasing, concave up. Okay. <clears throat> and side note again, if you're on rides, if you're building rides, roller coaster rides, Again, I, I realize, you know, most people don't think about this when they go on a roller coaster. They just, you know, have fun and all that. But when you're building a roller coaster, don't we have all of these, right? Those of you who like roller coasters, you've seen all of these, right? Haven't you seen a roller coaster go like that? It goes like that. It goes like that. I guess that seems to be the most scary, right? And I've seen roller coasters go like that, right? So in the roller coaster, if you want to, the next time you go to a roller coaster, when they open up, I guess, right? You see all of these, right? So when you build a roller coaster, you know, increasing concave down, decreasing concave up, decreasing concave down, right? And increasing concave up, all of these are there. Okay. All right, last few minutes. Okay, how do you do weird stuff like this now? So they give you all this stuff, come up with a graph that satisfies all of these conditions, right? Gets a graph of a function that satisfies all of the following conditions. Okay, so let me write all of this down. Okay, let's try 27 perhaps. Okay, f, f prime of zero, f prime of two, f prime of four is zero. That means horizontal tangent. Okay, so x equals zero, two, four. Horizontal tangent. Slope is zero. That's my interpretation. Okay, I'm not sure I can show you both at the same time. Okay, one more time. F prime of zero is zero. F prime of two, zero. F prime of four is zero. Slope is zero. Horizontal tangent. So that means you might have a maximum or minimum. That's supposed to be a colon there. F prime of X greater than zero, increasing. X is less than zero or between two and four. I'll write it like this. F is increasing from negative infinity to zero, union two to four. Okay, so one more time. 
f prime greater than zero, that means increasing. For x less than zero, that means negative infinity to zero, union two to four. And that's where it's increasing. I'm guessing the other part is decreasing. Yep, decreasing. F prime less than zero. That means F is decreasing from where to where. Uh, between zero and two or bigger than four. Four to infinity. Okay. So zero, two, union. Four to infinity. F double prime of X greater than zero, concave up between one and three. Okay. So F is concave up between one and three. And I'm guessing it's concave down other times. So concave up between one and three. Double prime, X is less than one, okay? Or greater than three, which is basically everywhere else, okay. So concave down, negative infinity to one union, three to infinity. All right, so let's double check that I got everything, then I'll lose the book. <clears throat> By the way, they don't say anything about X and Y coordinates, so you can put the X and Y just about anywhere, as long as they satisfy all these conditions. So F prime of zero, F prime of two, F prime of four are all equal to zero. Horizontal tangent at zero, two, and four. Increasing if x is less than zero or between two and four. So negative infinity to zero, two to four. Decreasing between zero and two and bigger than four, four to infinity. Double prime greater than zero, concave up between one and three, concave down everywhere else. X is less than one, negative infinity to one and x is greater than three, so three to infinity. Okay, so let's read the text and see if we can make heads or tails out of this. So we know stuff's gonna happen from zero to four, so zero, oh, and one between one and three also, so one, two, three, four. Okay, let's see. Increasing up until zero and then decreasing after zero. It must be a maximum. Okay. Between zero and two, let's see, zero and two decreases, then after that increases. So therefore, minimum must be going something like this. Between two and four increases, after that decreases. So it must be a maximum. Max, min, max. Okay. So let me write it like this. Increasing increasing, decreasing, decreasing, up, down, up, down. Okay. Concavity, concavity, concave down from negative infinity to one. CD, concave up from one to three. CU. Rest of the time, concave down, three to infinity. Oh boy. So here we go. Up and down, concave down, upside down U shape. Then concave up. Then concave down. So there we go. Inflection point. Inflection point. Max min, max, and here we are, inflection point, inflection point. Notice I took some liberties on the y-coordinate. I could put the y-coordinate anywhere. How do you know it's that high or that high? 
You don't. In fact, I'm not even putting any Y coordinates anywhere. Okay, the main thing is that this is higher, lower, higher, increasing. Okay, notice this, increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing. Concave down, upside down U shape. Concave up, rest of the time concave down. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff that we went over today, as you can see. And it looks like we're just about out of time, folks. Okay, so we're done for today. Uh, tomorrow I'll do some more and um, be ready for a quiz tomorrow on um, what I said, uh, absolute max and absolute min on a closed interval. Okay, all right, that'll do it for today, folks. So have a good afternoon and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, bye everyone.